What's up everyone? It's Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty, and today we are finally going to repair this hole in my slip extravaganza shawl. I've already lost it. Let me find it for you. So I knit this last year. It has been almost a full 12 months since many of us started on this adventure with the West Knits Mystery Knit Along. The next one is coming up here October 8th and I'm super excited for it. I have good intentions this year of really getting it done. Anyway, this is a repair video. I promise the tutorial is coming, um, but I somehow got this giant hole in my knitting when I blocked it. Um, it's been five months now, I think, since I blocked it and I still haven't repaired the hole. I have no idea what happened. It happened during a video that I was filming here for the channel, a blog, and I've just had it sitting um, since because I wanted to film a tutorial as I repair it. Now, I'm not like an expert or anything on making repairs to knitting. I'm just gonna try some things and hope they work out and you get to watch in the process. Also, I feel like I need to say that I dropped a pepperoni on my shirt earlier and it got a stain and I'm going to work out next. So I decided to not waste another shirt and just put on my workout clothes, but I did choose to match the shawl. <laughs> so anyway, let's just get right into it. Alrighty, let's take a look at this hole. So it's very interesting. I, again, have no idea what happened here, but it seems like we do have a few different points of breaking. So when you're repairing a hole or a snag or anything like this, just know that you can try different things without hurting your knitting if you're very, very careful. So what I'm gonna be looking for first is breaking points. Interestingly, I have three breaking points it looks like. I have three ends here, here, and here, at least that I can see from the right side. Let me flip this over and just see if that's any different. Um, let's see, so it looks like, yes, I've got this one and this one here. Where did that other one go? There it is. So I've got three different points where the yarn has actually broken and I'm gonna need to make sure that those points get tucked away so that they don't rip any further. So my tools of choice today are of course the yarns that match, although I think this is a different yarn. It's been so long that I actually can't find like the right yarn, but this one's really close. It actually looks closer in person than it does on camera. I'm pretty sure this is the right one. I've got some small scissors and I've got two different kinds of tapestry needles here. I like using these metal ones a lot because they have that bent tip. They're really great for getting into stitches. And then this one is gonna be super helpful for all of those tiny ends. These I have linked in my Amazon storefront and I'll also put a link for them below. Anytime you're left with a short end or you just have a lot of ends to use or to weave in, this thing is great. All right, let's start repairing. Looking more closely at this, I am trying to figure out what is missing here, like what is actually making the hole. So I can actually see these two rows of pink are what is missing. I'm actually not missing any of the gray in the stripe above or any of the gray in the stripe below. Those stitches kind of just look like they're gone because the pink ones aren't there. So in reality, I'm only missing two rows of one, two, and a half stitches because half of this column is still here. So that's what I'm going to attempt to recreate today is two rows of two and a half stitches. And I can just see that because I'm looking at each column of stitches and I'm looking at each row of stripes. The striping definitely helps me out here. And on some of them, if I look at this one, I actually have part of that pink row. So I really only need to create one more stitch here. I am gonna need two here and I'm going to need like halves here. So I've just grabbed my pink look-alike look yarn and I've threaded a long length through it. It's not attached to the ball, it's completely separate. So notice that I didn't try to weave in the small ends yet. I am going to do something with those to really secure them later on, but I want to bring back the stitches that are gone first. So let's actually start from right to left. I just find that 
a little bit easier to do. So what I'm going to do is make some duplicate stitches. Duplicate stitching is what's the right word for it? it? Kind of an embroidery technique that you can do on top of knitting, but it creates knit-like stitches, um, so it's really great to use for lots of things. So I'm gonna take my needle through and come up from the wrong side, and I am going to come up um, one stitch over from my broken stitches just to kind of get things anchored. So I'm coming up below the pink here, and I'm gonna make sure to leave like a pretty long tail on the other side because I'm probably gonna use it later to secure some of these tiny little ends. So I'm leaving a length down there. Now in order to duplicate stitch, you're gonna skip the stitch that you're actually duplicating. So you can see I've come up in the gray. I'm gonna skip this stitch here and I'm gonna to go to the stitch above it. So I'm just going to poke my needle underneath these two strands from the stitch above the one I'm duplicating. Scoop my needle on through. Yeah, this is definitely a different color. I don't know where, <laughs> I don't know where this color is, but honestly, in the long run, you're not gonna notice it. So I've come through, now I'm gonna come back down the left side of this stitch and go right back into the gray stitch from before and poke through to the other side. And I have effectively duplicated this stitch essentially created another, another stitch on top of it. That was just to anchor things. So now I'm gonna move on next door um, and I'm gonna come up right in that next gray stitch. Now we're getting into some of the broken things, right? So I'm gonna come up through there. I'll just check on the back. Okay, just making sure I'm not pulling anything too crazy here. All right, again, I'm just kind of making this up. <laughs> Not a professional here. All right, so this is one of my stitches that is broken. There's only half of it. There's nothing over here, but here's the top part of it. See, I'm just kind of following the stitch like where it goes, all right? And if I kind of if I kind of pull on that, you can see one of those pink stitches come back to life a little bit. So we're just gonna kind of recreate that. So I'm gonna follow it up. I'm gonna go into the two, into the stitch above it, like so. And then I'm gonna come back down through the gray stitch below it. And that's going to recreate that stitch. Okay, I'm gonna tighten things up a little bit. Just by pulling, pulling, there. Okay. So I've put one stitch back into place. All right. So I think I can try to do that maybe once more right here. We can try it. I mean, there's nothing below. That's the issue. Um, so I might need to come back over here and, and get this one first. Actually, yeah, I think that's definitely what I need to do. So let's do that. Um, okay. What's, what's this right there? Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, see, this is so interesting. That's like a partial stitch from above, which is very interesting. I gotta try to think how I can like pull that down, like where that should go to. This is all kind of like trial and error, you know? I want those out of the way. I want those ends out of the way. They're bothering me. So I just kind of realized that over here, I was just working on like one missing row, but here I'm missing two rows of pink. So I need to build the bottom layer and then the top layer. So we're going to try something. We're going to try to build the bottom layer in these two gray stitches. And then we're going to try to build the next row on top of that and just see what happens, okay? We're gonna just try it. So I'm coming back up. I'm gonna come right in the middle of that next gray stitch because we just worked on that one. So let's try to work on this one. Let's see, let's just see what happens, okay? We're gonna come up and actually I'm gonna pull this out of there because it's really just in the way right now. And that will give us a little bit of a longer um, piece of yarn to work with anyway. Okay, so then technically I would be creating a stitch here, but I don't have anything. So I'm just gonna kind of like make a loop 
and come back through here. I'm gonna leave a loop about as big of a stitch as I can. Okay, right, go back through, and I'm just leaving a loop. Okay, kind of like you would see like a loose stitch, right? Like when the stitch pops off your needle, you know, it kind of just looks like a little loop like that. Oh my gosh, my left arm is like burning, like I'm doing a workout or something. It's kind of stressful, isn't it? All right, so I've got my loop here. There you go, a little more to focus. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over here and do the same sort of thing. I'm gonna come into the bottom stitch right here. Wait a second. That one looks like a full stitch almost, doesn't it? I think I lost that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna come up into that one. Don't lose it. Oh wait, I have an idea. Check this out. I, that this loop, this pretend stitch, this, it's gonna be a stitch. I've put it on a stitch marker. So now it can't go away. <laughs> and now I can't lose it. So now I'm free to go next door, go through my gray, pull through. But remember, we don't wanna lose that. We wanna keep our loop, right? Okay, and then now I'm kind of making another loop because again, there's nothing here to like anchor into yet. Um, there's half of a stitch, just half. You have to kind of understand the duplicate stitch method here. It's like, that's just an end, so it can go away. But there should be a half stitch here that I'm skipping and a half stitch here that I'm going into but it doesn't really exist, so we're just pretending like it's there. And I have another stitch marker. I don't know why we're whispering. We're whispering because we don't wanna disturb this and mess it up. You really can't mess up knitting, like worst cases, you gotta take it out, right? Okay, so this is a little crazy. Hopefully this encourages you not to be afraid to try things, right, right. Okay, and we're gonna finish that, I know this looks like a big old mess right now, by going back into the gray, okay? So we've just kind of created two stitches, both are on markers, two stitches that are floating here ready for us to make two more stitches on top of them and close this up. So that's what we're gonna be brave and do here next. But we've just come across from right to left. For these two, we're gonna go across from left to right um, so that we can work on top of it. Okay, so here we go. First, we're gonna start with the purple. So we're gonna come up in the stitch, yeah? Right, right, right. Okay, and then we're ignoring all those ends. We're gonna go from left to right. I usually use my left hand when I'm doing this, so let me switch hands. We're gonna go from left to right across the gray now. I haven't done this in a minute. Oh, you know what I should have done? Oh my gosh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot about that. I forgot about that right there. Can you see it right there? Okay, so hold on, let's go back. Let's go back. Things can be undone. It's all okay. We're gonna go back. I'm gonna take out this half stitch that I did. I'm going to come back through. We're going to unduplicate because no, oh, don't fall out. We actually do have right here. Oh, it's so hard to get it to focus. Right here, we actually do have part of a stitch. I forgot. I forgot about it. So, if that was there, we would be able to come through it like that. 
<gasps> that probably means we should have done it before too. Rats. Okay. Reverse, reverse. We're going back again. All right, we're back to the original pretend stitch that we're making here. And we don't want to forget our little loopy friend here at the top. All these little ends just keep getting visually in the way. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. There we go. Okay, so we don't want to forget this right here. He's a stitch too. There he is. And I want to be able to get through it like so. Like that. Okay. And I'm still making my like pretend loop. My blue marker is still there. Through one. Okay. Now I'm going to quick go over to the next gray stitch. This is messy. Over to the next gray stitch right there. See that? So I don't want to let go of anything. Pull through. Okay. Now I'm going to come through the other side of this. All right. So that little loop that I pulled down, I've come through one side of it for one stitch, one side of it for the other. See, look at that. It's like a puzzle. It is a puzzle. There we go. Out of my way. Get out of my way. Okay. It's not all perfect. Let me tighten that up. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of starting to look like something. Right? Right? Trial and error. Okay. Let me fix this up a little bit. And by fix it up, I mean just get the little ends poked to the back so they're not in our way. While I was cleaning this up, I realized that these two ends are the broken piece. And this other one, this third one, oh, where did it even go? This one is just an end, like a, a previously woven an end. It's not broken. So that makes way more sense because usually if a piece of yarn breaks, it breaks in two. So if there were two ends that makes sense if there was four ends that makes sense but three didn't really make sense so this one can you see it run along there this is just another end um, so that one will be really easy to weave in it just was part of that and then these are my two broken pieces that we're going to take care of in a second so all of those have been kind of pulled through in the back and now we're going to flip back to the front and finish repairing this we're already looking so much better. The hole is so much smaller now. So I just need to make my way across again right here to repair this like missing half stitch. That's really all that's missing right now is that missing half stitch. And you can see the loop I made previously is, uh, you know, here with my stitch marker. And once I have that, it will all be closed and it'll just be about evening things up and getting in those ends. So, oops, where I ended was right down here with this stitch. So that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna do a little more duplicate stitching. I'm gonna come right back up the stitch that I just finished, right up the center. And this time we're working left to right. So I'm gonna go this way across. Oops, no, sorry, in the gray. Because we're working on that second row of pink. And usually I do this left-handed, but because I don't want to let go of all the ends I'm holding on to, I'm going to awkwardly do this right-handed. Okay, so then back into here, and we're going to come up the center of this stitch that we made right there. We're almost, we're almost to the point where we've repaired it. This is so great. I'm really pleased with this already. I don't want to speak too soon because that's what I did in the other video, and then it was messed up. I said, oh, I've broken it before by stretching it too much. Don't do that. And then it broke. <laughs> All right, so come up through the gray here. It's a little different working left to right. It feels very awkward, but it's fine, I promise. Okay, so here's that last half stitch that I'm going through. So just go right into the center of it. 
and then we're going to make our way over to this one. And even though this stitch is already here, I want to like complete this. Like I want to go on top of it again, just to make sure everything's there. It's not going to be obviously as perfect as it would be um, if I didn't have this mistake, but I think that that will make it extra secure. So let's just do that one more. Oh, no, wait, that doesn't make sense. Hold on. Come on, Natalie, get it together. I shouldn't have come up through that one. I should be coming up through this one here. There, that's actually better. I don't think I need to go through that. Okay. Obviously, I'm not going to leave the end hanging out on this side. It will go back to the back. I might not even need it to come out of that stitch. Let me get this out of the way. Okay. Ah, so cool. All right. So before I weave in any ends, I'm going to go back through all like the stitches that I created. Obviously, this one's very large and it doesn't look quite right. So I'm going to go back through all the stitches I created. I'm just going to go ahead and poke this to the back because it doesn't need to be up in the front like that. And I'm just going to even things up with my knitting needle before I go and flip to the wrong side and weave in the ends. Already that looks so much better, just going through and tightening everything up. These are basically the four stitches that I repaired and they are a slightly lighter color because I'm not using the same yarn, but it looks quite, quite good. I went through twice and just followed like zigzagging the, um, the, or the way that the yarn moves, which is like a zigzag, essentially up, down, up, down, and then it went up, up, down, up, down to the second level. Um, so I might do that one more time and then I'm going to flip over and weave in the ends. I didn't want to weave this one in yet because once I wove that in, I wouldn't be able to do that final tug on that stitch. You can see it moving right there, right here in the center. Um, and I need to be able to do that to tighten everything up. So I might just even do it one more time following things through. You can always do, I do this on like the edges of armholes, <laughs> armholes, sock heels, stuff like that, just to tighten everything up and make it look a lot nicer. I'm satisfied with this now, so I'm just gonna flip things over and work on the ends. We've got several ends going on here. We have our two new ends, which is our repair yarns. I'm not super worried about those, we're gonna kind of save those for last in case we need to go over any of these other ends. We've got uh, the two ends of the broken yarn and then the one, let me get them separated here. Uh, this one down here is just part of another end that we were weaving in. And then these two up here are the broken threads. So these are the ones I'm most concerned with. I don't want those coming undone because it's actually broken, whereas this other one has a longer end attached to it. And obviously these ones have quite long ends that we can weave in. So let's deal with these first. That's when I'm going to use my favorite tool. Again, I have this link down below. Um, this comes in a pack with different sizes. This is the smallest size. Just watch out for it because usually one end, I've bought several of these packs, one end is kind of rough. The other one's a lot smoother. So just make sure you're using the smooth end to actually um, weave in your ends with. So let's just take one of these tiny little ends and we are going to, you know, you want to kind of pull on it a little bit, check on the right side, make sure things look nice and even before you weave it in because if you weave it in without tightening things up, it's not going to look so good. And I am just going to go poking through stitches next door, splitting stitches here to get this little guy um, weaved in nicely. And then I'm just gonna pull that straight through, like so. Now he is tucked out of the way. Let's go ahead and get these other two. 
Now I'm constantly checking the right side just to make sure that everything looks okay, that everything looks even and where I'm weaving in ends is not too visible. I mean, again, it's not gonna be perfect, but much better than having a hole here. And if these ends are just like way too short even to get them woven in like this, you can always use the uh, needle and yarn that you're using to repair to kind of like whip stitch over these ends and get them extra secure or if they're shorter, get them secured down. You can kind of like go through the threads of them and just get them really, really tight in there. I don't think that's going to be necessary for me here, so I'm just going to weave in these two ends like I regularly would, but now that this is all out of the way, I'm going to check the right side one more time and just make sure I like how everything looks. You can barely tell that there's a repair there close up. So I think far away, we're gonna have no problem. All right, she's all done. The wrong side, not quite as pretty. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna trim any of these ends because honestly, they are not going to bother me in the slightest and you won't see them. And I don't want these guys that are the broken pieces to be any shorter than they already are. Whew, it's done. Well, I can't believe that the thing that I've been putting off for five months took me about 20 minutes <laughs> to repair, probably probably would have taken less time except that I was <laughs> really thinking hard about how to show you. Okay, do you know where it is? No! It's right here. Right, right there. Oh, yes. <laughs> After so many months, I've never even put this thing on because I couldn't. Well, get in focus, camera. What are you doing? Just making me all blurry. There we go. So satisfied. <laughs> so hopefully if that encouraged you, if you have a hole or something, a repair that needs to be made in your knitting or crochet, you can do it. It's, I know it's hard and I know it's scary, but just take your time, get a good bright light, <laughs> do it during the day, not when you're tired and when you have distractions. Whew. Anyway, I'm gonna go run off that stress and celebrate maybe with a pumpkin beer. <laughs> Happy knitting everyone, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.